business off the ground is Melvin Wong, who claims that he can make every sports fan's dreams come true by giving them the chance to rule the game. Cashing in on the ability to trade, cut and sign players like a real sports club owner spurred Melvin on a journey that he hopes will make his fantasy a reality. My name is Melvin Wong and I have been an entrepreneur for six years in the making. And I love sports and I used to be the Sarawak State Cyclist for Sigma 98 as well as an active fencer. And I'm here to present to you my product, which is totally related to sports, it's called Fan XT. And our mission is to be the worldwide leader in fantasy sports. Now, if you Google the word fantasy sports today, you notice that there's a lot of fantasy sports sites that is offering fantasy sports for US-based sports. Sports like NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, Major League Soccer, and more. And so far, we have accumulated total of 120,000 users from across the world. Today we have games such as Fantasy English Premier League, Fantasy Euro 2012 and Fantasy F1. And all these games are playable on different platforms such as on our website, on Facebook app, on iPhone as well as on, on Android. Will fantasy sports have what it takes to be turned into a reality? Or will it just remain a fantasy? The second contestant to get his business off the ground is Melvin Wong, who claims that he can make a sports fan's dream turn into a reality by giving them a chance to rule the game. Now, cashing in on the ability to trade, sign and cut a player, just like any sports club owner would, has spurred Melvin on a journey that he hopes will turn his fantasy into a reality. In the risky game of business, a good product does not necessarily mean good business and a legit and lucrative idea may not last for the long haul without the right players. Will Melvin manage to put his game face on in front of the judges? We'll see. I'm feeling very excited today. Um, I hope I'll do well in the shoot and the episode today and hope that judges will understand my business and able to proceed to the semi-final. Uh, we're going to talk about most about the problems that we plan to solve. We have four problems we plan to solve. We have our unique selling propositions, our competitive advantage, our revenue growth, of course, our advisor. Um, I'm pretty confident on what we are doing. Um, we just hope that the judges would understand our business in a more global perspective as well as um, the investment that we are looking for is quite high so perhaps I will share with you later on how much we are asking for we just hope that judges would able to agree with our request for investment How are you judges? I'm here to sh showcase my product Fan XT, and we want to be the worldwide leader in fantasy sports. Our products basically try to solve four problems. Now, first problem, if you go to the website or Google today, if you Google the word fantasy sports, you'll find that there's a lot of sports that are catering for US-based sports. Sports like NFL, NBA, NHL, baseball, and etc. How about the sports that you and I play or watch? Sports like soccer or football, cricket, rugby, or even F1. So we plan to create a fantasy sports site that caters for all different kinds of fantasy sports for the market Europe and Asia, which is us. Now, currently, we have already launched a latest fantasy game called Fantasy Euro. Currently, you can play it on web, on Facebook, on iPhone, and soon we also have an app on Samsung Smart TV. At the moment, we are having as many as 43,000 users across the world playing our game 
and we hope to achieve 50,000 users when Euro 2012 starts. Now, second USP is we aim to be the official and exclusive fantasy sports provider for sports associations across the world. Now, I'll give you an example. FIA or Formula One, they don't have an official fantasy sports game yet, even Asian Football Confederation. And currently, we are talking in terms of agreement with them to come up with a fantasy AFC Champions League. Now, third of all, if you go to a lot of fantasy sports sites today, you'll find that a lot of, them, a lot of those sites are only in English. So what we do is we actually provide multi-languages in our fantasy sports games. If you go to our website today, fantasy.com, and see our games, you can see that we have translated to four languages. We have English, Malaysia, Chinese, as well as also uh, Indonesia. But for white level games that we have done for our customers, we have translated up to seven different languages. The last but not least, sports fans are always mobile. When they're mobile, we're going to create a multi-platform fantasy sports game which they could play on Facebook, iPhone, Android, and eventually in front of their TV. Our revenue growth um, in 2000, comparing from 2010 to 2011, we have grew as high as 12, 200%. And our gross profit for each game that we implement is as high as 75%. Now, our biggest client, as you can see, we have worked with Asian Football Confederation, Mansion. Mansion is a sponsor for Manchester City. We have worked with Force India Formula One team, Viettel, number one operator in uh, mobile operator in Vietnam. In terms of financials, we are currently seeking a one million dollar US dollar investment, which is equivalent to about 3 million ringgit. Most of money, I would say roughly about 70% of our main money will go for commercialization, such as for advertising, marketing. And the other 30% will normally go to R&D. You don't need us. I mean, you're already <laughs> uh, um, Well, that's what everybody says. Well, <laughs> but as you can see, uh, market changes very fast. Um, we're looking for expansion and growth. Um, um, we, we're looking for quite a, sub a substantial amount of money so that we can actually be the leader in fantasy sports. Yeah, what's your revenue so far? I mean, um, cumulative. 2012 and 2011 compared, we actually grew as high as 20%. And 2011 quarter one and this year's quarter one, our revenue actually has grew 200% as well. So assuming nobody acquire you, so what kind of exit strategy do, would you have? Or you will just be happy, continue? To we have a, a, quite a list of people to, to acquire us or to partner us uh, because we can see that we, we have a lot of value to broadcasters. Fantasy sports are proven to increase TV ratings for sports channels, that's one. Um, we have people um, who has been in the sports media companies, um, which is also one of our potential acqui acquiring um, people. Um, we, we if no one's, if our, I mean, if our target acquirer doesn't seem to happen, um, we'll be happy to be number one um, fantasy sports site in the world. I still don't, I'm not still not clear because why is your exit strategy that you put up is all about being acquired by others? We have to understand our investors as well. Yes. Invest, oh, uh, okay. Our investors think of a way out even before they come in. So we think that um, we have to come up with a very beautiful exit strategy mm -hmm. and I myself are wanting to exit from the company eventually as well. So we're looking at about a span of three years. Mm -hmm. So we can exit profitably together, and hopefully, hopefully in a t five to 10 times the amount that you put in. How much are you, how many percentage, how many percent are you giving up? We're looking at about 30 to 40%. Okay. Yeah. And uh, now, the, all the games, you own all the IP? Correct. And what about, let's say the F, F1? Uh, do the, don't you need to get the license from FIA to do that? It's very clear in the market that uh, fantasy sports does not violate any um, trademark or copyright issue because it actually uses information from the public domain. Now, how do you seek to ensure that this uh, increase is there for you? Okay, currently we are spending about slightly more than 200 ringgit or I would say 300 ringgit per day uh, to advertise on Facebook ads. We are getting about 1,000 new users per day. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about an acquisition cost is about mm -hmm. 30 cents per user. Mm -hmm. So putting that into a projection, we're projecting that we're definitely going to hit um, 50,000 uh, or more. Yeah, 50, the final few weeks yeah. of 
euro, mm -hmm. uh, we, ex we hope to hit as many as 2,000 users per day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for listening. Um, are you confident that you managed to present enough um, to convince the investors to part with their money? Well, three minutes is always quite short for us to present our full business plan. But um, cutting it short, uh, I believe I've presented uh, good enough mm -hmm. with enough key points to convince the investors or the judges that we um, should go to the next round. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now, the next round will actually require you being awarded with 5,000 ringgit seating fund to help, I don't know, get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. What would your company do with that 5,000? Okay, at the moment, we're trying to court um, Football Association of Indonesia, mm -hmm. um, Liga Prima. So we want to be the exclusive and official fantasy sport provider for the upcoming Indonesian league. So I believe the good way to spend that 5,000 ringgit is to go to Indonesia, to have a meeting with them, um, to have a, even meet with all the other potential um, clients. Mm -hmm. and we'll definitely be going to Asia, no frills. <laughs> I hope when we come back, we'll be able to bring back a piece of paper. And that will be the agreement between us and the association that we are now the official fantasy sports provider mm -hmm. for them.